friends and welcome to a video that is a little bit different. Today we are doing a tag. We are doing the makeup book tag. I don't know who started this tag um, but the first video I ever saw uh, was by Ariel Bassett which I will leave a link to below and I'll leave a couple of other links of other people's videos that I've really liked. Basically what happens is I'm gonna do my makeup. I'll show you what products I use but like I don't know anything about makeup so like please don't judge me or take this as any kind of recommendation. <laughs> and there are questions associated with each kind of like stage of the makeup process and of course they are bookish questions. So we're gonna talk a little bit about makeup but we're mostly gonna talk about books. So first is primer and the question is a book that left a lasting impression. Now mine looks a bit gross because it came from Chemist Warehouse where they put sticky tape around everything that's really hard to get off. Um, but I just have the NYX Angel Veil and I just put it all over my face. And for the book that left a lasting impression, I have it right here because I just recently finished it and it is The Yield by Tara June Winch. I finished it four or five days ago and I have not stopped thinking about it. And it's one of those books that afterwards I just kind of sat there crying. And then when I woke up in the morning and started thinking about it, I started crying again. It's basically a story told from three different perspectives. The main one, which is kind of driving the story is from August. And she is a young Aboriginal woman who has been living in the UK, I think for about 10 years and it's just come home because her grandfather has passed away. The other perspective and the one that I think is truly unique and was probably most moving um, was from the perspective of her grandfather. Basically he sort of knew he was dying so for the few months before he passed away he started writing down a dictionary of his Aboriginal language and so his story is literally like a dictionary like it's laid out like a dictionary but rather than just um, giving us basic like definitions of each word he gives us the definition of the word through telling parts of his own story. And to me, just the idea of that in itself was so moving, like this, this idea of telling his life story, but also in that process um, of keeping his language alive. It was just amazing. It was beautifully done. And then the third perspective is from this like missionary, a guy who, like a priest who ran a mission. Um, in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And then in present day, not only is August's grandmother um, dealing with the loss of her husband, the man that she loved, she's also having to move um, because the land that she's been living on, which they do not own, um, is going to be mined. And although it is a fictionalized story, it's very much based on the reality for many Aboriginal people in their communities. And it was just beautifully done. I know it's a book that's gonna stay with me. I'm still thinking about it nearly a week after I finished it. Right, concealer. Um, um, I have this NARS, I think it's soft matte concealer and I don't use a huge amount of it and I do just use my fingers. Now for concealer, our question is a character you wish you could get rid of. And the first character that came to mind was in another book that I recently read, which was The Lost Flowers of Alice Hart by Holly Ringland. And I really wish I could get rid of the grandmother, June. This is a book that I read recently in a vlog. So if you wanna know more about my experience reading that book, I will leave a link for you in the cards and in the description box below. But basically it is a another Australian novel um, about a young girl we meet her when she's I think about seven or something um, Alice whose father is hugely abusive to both her and her mother and eventually something happens to where Alice has to go and live with her grandmother who she's never met before and a lot of the tension from that point on in the book is basically Alice wanting to know more about her family, her mother, her father, where she comes from, all of that stuff. June, however, basically just refuses to tell her anything. And I understand that June avoiding these conversations has a lot to do with her own trauma and her own experience, but because that was basically the driving force of everything else that happens in the book, I just, it really frustrated me. And June just really gave me the shit, so she is the character I would choose to get rid of. Now, foundation. This has always been the hardest thing for me in my makeup, just with my skin, it's a little bit tricky. Studio Mac, Mac Studio Fix? <laughs> Whatever this is. This has been really good. And our question for foundation is to pick your favorite first book in a series. Now, I have two. 
I couldn't pick between them, so I'm gonna talk about two. The first is All Systems Red by Martha Wells, which is the first in the Murderbot Diaries. This has just quickly become one of my favorite series. I absolutely love it. And that first book was just so fun. It certainly set up like the character um, of Murderbot really, really well. And even though it's such a short book, it's a novella, I think it's about 150 pages. It just packs so much into it. It's very fast paced, very action packed. Um, and yet we still kind of learn so much about the character of Murderbot. And Murderbot is just really funny. I feel like I've spoken about Murderbot so much on this channel already though. So the other book I wanted to mention is Nevermore, The Trials of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This is an Australian middle grade um, and so far two books are out. The third is being released in the next month or so. And it's been compared to Harry Potter and I think like that comparison is fair, especially like the first couple of chapters of the first book where we have like a 13 year old who's really treated poorly by her family. And then in the middle of the night, out of nowhere, this stranger kind of just bursts in and whisks Morrigan off to a strange magical land. So very Harry Potter in its setup. But from there, it certainly stands on its own two feet. Basically our protagonist, Morrigan, ends up having to participate in this kind of big competition in order to kind of win her place in this world so that she can stay. Just a lot of magic and intrigue and fun and adventure. Now for finishing powder, blush, and sort of bronzy contoury thing, I use the same product. Um, it is this Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit ghost palette thing. Oh, also a highlighter in here. Basically like most of the other face stuff is just this palette. So for contour, our question is a book that could do with some shaping. And honestly, this is probably one of uh, the hardest questions for me because I, that's probably one of my biggest complaints with books. Um, for me, a book really has to earn its page length. And I know people say that of books that are like 800 pages. I say that for anything beyond like 350. So wanting a book to be shorter or just more concise or whatever is probably the thing that I say most often about books that I, you know, have some criticism of. And the first book that came to mind, I don't feel very confident in saying this because it's been a very long time since I read it, but it was a very strong feeling I had back when I was 16 and I first read this book. And that is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. It was the first kind of like proper grown up novel I ever read and I was so excited for it, but I found myself very frustrated whilst reading it. And I remember wishing that it was just a hell of a lot shorter, which is funny because I know it's already a very short book, but somehow it managed to feel repetitive. And I remember wishing it was a short story and thinking how much of an incredible short story it would make. And then I later found out that it was originally written as a short story. So I remember having those feelings very, very strongly and kind of loving the idea and loving parts of it but just finding it repetitive and just like really drawn out. However, to be fair, I was only 16 when I read it. It was my first kind of adult book and I do really want to reread it and I do wonder if I'd have quite different feelings about it today than I did when I was 16. Now for Blush, a book that had cringe-worthy romance. Now, to be fair, I do not read a lot of romance. And I'm also discovering more and more that I'm quite picky about romance. One recent example was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. And I kind of grew to appreciate that more. But at the very beginning, I think the whole like really intense, like true love, love at first sight stuff doesn't do it for me. It was just really dramatic and over the top. And I'm just, I'm just not into it. Another romance that I read fairly recently that was cringy in a really different way was in Boy Swallow's Universe. Now romance is not like the core of this story and it only happens towards the end of the book. So I guess this next bit is a little bit spoilery, not about the core plot, but you know, the relationship within the book. I've mentioned before that this book felt very self-indulgent to me and the romance is a big part of that. Basically Eli is just like so amazing and so brilliant and so clever that he manages at 18, I think, to make this like 28 year old woman just like fall madly in love with him. And this is a woman who's really smart, doing really well in her career, but Eli's just like so quirky and unusual and special and I don't know, I just wasn't into it. Especially when he'd met her several years before when he was really quite young. And just like the fantasy around that and kind of putting someone up on this weird pedestal and I don't know, it was objectifying and the reciprocation of that didn't feel realistic. Honestly, it just sort of felt like this guy's wet dream. I didn't, I wasn't into it. That sounded a bit mean. Oh well. Now, highlighter, also part of the Hourglass palette. And it is a book that brightens your day. Now, because I have really oily skin, I have always avoided highlighter, but this one's really subtle um, and just kind of adds a bit of sheen. So I quite like it. 
two books came to mind for this one. The first is Meeting Fairies by R. Ogilvy Crumby. If you've been following me for a while from my old channel, you will have heard me talk about this book a lot over the years. This is basically a true story. It's sort of like written as a memoir or a diary entry, perhaps might be a better description of Rock or R. Ogilvy Crumby and his experience meeting nature spirits in Edinburgh Gardens. He then goes on to develop a relationship with these spirits, even meets Pan um, and kind of learns a lot from them about uh, how to treat the environment and how to work with plants and animals and nature. It's just sweet and it's probably the book that I've reread the most. I just love it. Another thing that's really cheering me up at the moment is Skullface Bookseller Honda Sun, which is a short manga series of just four volumes about a bookseller who works in the manga department. And it is based on the real experience of the author working in a bookshop. And so a lot of Honda's trials and tribulations are very relatable to me as somebody who also works in a bookshop, but it is kind of a little bit exaggerated and just really fucking funny. Now powder, I guess this will be um, just like the sort of finishing powder I put under my eyes. Again, coming from the Hourglass palette. And this is your favorite last book in a series. And honestly, thinking about this was a bit tricky because I realized I haven't actually finished all that many series. But one of my favorite series um, would be the Mad Adam trilogy by Margaret Atwood. I think that Oryx and Craig would be my favorite book in the series, which was the first book. So I suppose I could have used that for the other question. For me, this is one of Margaret Atwood's best works, especially Oryx and Craig. I just, that was one of my favorite books. And this is about as sci-fi as she gets, but I think she does it really well. It's been a while since I've read those books, but basically the idea of Oryx and Craig and then throughout the trilogy is that it's like a near future dystopia where an engineered bioweapon has basically wiped out most of humanity. And the three books are told from a few different perspectives. In Oryx and Craig, the first book, we learn a lot about like what actually happened and how the world basically ended. But just really, really interesting. And I really enjoy Margaret Atwood's writing. So I love those books. All right, now onto eyebrows. And our question is a book you think everybody should read. Now this question I find a bit tricky because I don't feel qualified to pick a book that every human being should read. But I do have a book that I wish more people would read and that I just wish got a whole lot more hype. And that is Foreign Soil by Maxine Beniba Clark. This is another Australian book. It is a collection of short stories, many of which are set in Australia, but not all of them are. And these short stories are basically all of just different people living in places that in some way they feel or other people feel they don't belong. So all of the stories kind of do tackle themes of identity, belonging, community, and intertwined with that is also a lot of discussion of things like immigration and race and gender. And I just loved every single story in here. I read this book so quickly and the way Maxine writes is just so enthralling and engaging. I think nearly every single story by the end of it, I just really didn't want it to be over. I didn't want my time with these characters to end, but then it only took me a few pages to be completely invested in the next story. And I think Maxine's ability to kind of engage me that much in every single story so quickly and to have the characters all feel so distinct and individual I just think that's an incredible skill. So just from a literary standpoint I think this is a wonderful book but then it also just deals with some really important topics um, and it does so in really human beautiful moving ways. But also I just want to talk about it more and I want to talk about it with people more so please read it and talk to me about it because it's one of my favorite books. All right now we are on to my favorite bit eyeshadow and I have to pick what palette I want to use today. I think we might try out my new Colourpop palettes. I've only played with these a few times and I like them but I'm not in love with them. But I think that's on me more than anything else. Uh, so I have Lilac You A Lot and In A Trance. I have a couple of other, but I think we can play around with these two today. And this is quite an easy question, although eyeshadow is gonna take me the longest to do. The question is to pick a book with your favorite color on the cover. My favorite color has always been yellow. And a few books that come to mind are volume one of Goodnight Pum Pum, Stone Mattress by Margaret Atwood, and Yago by Jacqueline Woodson, kind of has a yellowy tinge to it. That's my mum's favorite book ever. And my brother and I also love it. I really need to clean my brushes. <laughs> About this stage in the process, every day I ask myself, is this too pink? Do we dare to put some glitter on? <laughs> okay, that's a lot of glitter. I'm committed now. I look like what my like four-year-old self would have picked out. <laughs> pink and glitter. I'm not entirely mad about it though. I have glitter on the ends of my eyelashes. <laughs> sort of feel like I want a little bit of orange, just a tiny bit. So we're gonna use just this 
just above slightly to add a bit. If I can open it. These are really tricky to open. Just to kind of like, I don't know, lighten it up or something. I feel like sometimes this can help. Like I don't want it to look like a purple and orange shadow. I just feel like it adds a bit of dimension or something. Okay, I think we're good. Time for some eyeliner, I think, is next. Now, this is to pick a dark and mysterious novel. Now, the first that came to mind was the second or third adult book I ever read. We've spoken about the first, which was Frankenstein, which I guess could also fit this. The second was Rebecca, and this I loved. I just turned 16. This was the second or third like adult book I read, and oh my god, it was a journey. Now it's a bit of a classic, so I'm sure most of you have at least heard of it. There's a new Netflix or movie or something coming out, which I'm so excited about. It is basically the story about a young woman who is nameless throughout the book, who ends up meeting, falling in love with, and marrying a man very quickly who's quite wealthy. And our protagonist is quite naive and young and sweet. And she ends up discovering that her husband um, had a wife who passed away and her name was Rebecca and she was, a wonderful, beautiful party person that everybody loved and admired. She was quite a big personality basically. And so our protagonist is like living in the shadow of Rebecca. But then the housemaid kind of really super hates the new wife and loved Rebecca. So she kind of ends up being quite nasty to our protagonist. And so it feels very haunting and spooky. Um, and then throughout the novel, we sort of unveil more of who Rebecca was and what happened to her. Anyway, I just love that book. I definitely want to reread it before I watch the new show or movie or whatever's coming soon. Now for mascara, but mascara isn't on the list. So I'll get this over and done with it and then we'll get back to lips, I think is our last one. All right, now lipstick, our favorite book kiss. Now my favorite lipstick brand is definitely Natio. I have a lot of Natio lipsticks and my favorite color is Delight. And when I'm feeling a bit fancy, I'll put a bit of lip gloss on. And I got um, in the Pat McGrath sale. I really like their, like, you can get sets of, um, like, the mini sizes. And when they're, like, 50% off, they're actually not ridiculously priced. And I really like them. And I got this shiny purple one, which I never would have picked for myself. But I actually kind of really like, like, putting a little bit on, on top of lipstick like this. I just think it's really fun. I feel like a space alien or something. I don't know, it might be a bit much, but I think it's really fun. Like I've already said, I don't read a lot of romance and I am realizing more and more that I'm quite picky about the way romance is depicted. But a book I listened to on audio very recently was C.M. Martinez and the Moonlit Beginning of Everything, which is quite a title. And this is like a YA story about an immigrant family in America. And it's beautifully done. The characters are so alive and real and the whole story is so engaging. But around the midway point, it sort of turns into a bit of a sci-fi story. It was a really, really Really good time and I'm really glad I picked it up. I got it um, through Libro FM's um, like influencer program and I'm so glad I did because I didn't, this book wasn't even on my radar, but the book and the audiobook in particular were just fabulous. And I think it did like young romance beautifully. Even just the way consent was de dealt with, it was really well done. But the relationship um, between two characters in this book is really, really beautiful and I love the way um, our protagonist describes like her bodily and sensual experiences and the first kiss between these two characters I just it was really really just uh, like electrifying but not overdone and I don't know I just loved it so that's probably the most I've enjoyed romance in a while even though it wasn't just a romance book the romance was handled just so well and that was just such a fun book I loved it but that is the end. Our face is done. We've spoken about the books. The tag is finished. I'm not going to give you an obligatory narcissistic montage a la Smoky Glow, but I hope you can get a bit of an idea of what this looks like. And I think it turned out quite pretty. I just thought this would be a fun video because I really have gotten more into makeup in the last year or so. And quite a few of the videos I've been filming or parts of vlogs I've been filming have been kind of like sitting here while I'm doing my makeup. So. I just thought this was fun. If you happen to know who was the original creator of this tag, please let me know so I can link them below. I'll have another look, but I didn't have much luck when I first went searching, but I would like to credit them if I can. Anyway, that is all from me for now. Thank you to my patrons over on Patreon for all of your support. And an especially big thank you goes to Tracy Timmerman, Laurie, Lynette Brown, The Hales K, and Carly Gravatt. I hope you enjoyed this video and getting ready with me. Let me know what you think of this look in the comments below, and I will talk to you again very soon. So much love. Bye.